A story exclusive now with Megan Lapp, a fisheries liaison for Seafreeze, one of the companies that's at the heart of this case, and Mark Chenoweth, an attorney working on the case. He is president and, legal and chief legal officer at the New Civil Liberties Alliance. Um, Megan and Mark, thank you very much. It's great to have both of you with us. Uh, Megan, let me start with you, if I may. Explain to everybody watching at home right now, just sort of a day in the life. How do, what is happening on these boats how is the government walking onto the ship and asking questions and charging money for people to abide by these regulations? What does it look like on a daily basis? Well, on a daily basis, before you leave the dock, you have to tell the government what you're going to fish for. You have a government ankle bracelet on your boat called a vessel monitoring system. They know where you are at all times. They know how fast you're going, what direction you're going in. Um, so there's, there's also a lot of reporting that is required by the government. And we're also required by Congress to take fisheries observers on our boat when we're chosen. Um, they collect fisheries data as well as um, enforce rules and regulations. We can be boarded by the Coast Guard at any time, um, with or without cause. And this is all going on while we're harvesting fish. We're hauling back nets. We're using heavy equipment, um, at, you know, on a platform that's moving. Um, it's going fishing is a dangerous profession, but it's also, you know, an extremely rewarding one. Um, but in this particular instance, the government decided that it wanted to expand its monitoring program, but Congress didn't give it the money to do so. Um, so the agency's solution was to force those costs on us. So when this monitor comes onto the boat, how much does the fishing company, in your case, Seafreeze, how much do they have to pay for the for, for the privilege of having this government official come onto the boat for the day? The estimates, I remember, are about $710 a day. Um, and that can be more per day than our crew actually working um, on the vessel are going to make. And that's a huge problem. It, it, it's incredible. And, you know, Mark, this is just emblematic of what companies all across the country go through in terms of how they have to pay the government, basically, in order to keep functioning a as a company um, because of these layers and layers of regulation. How do you see this? Uh, that's right, Martha. I mean, Megan and Seafreeze, the, the example that they have is just one example, but we see across uh, these federal agencies where Congress has not given the agency the authority to do something, but the agency takes that authority for itself. Here, Congress never said that these agencies can charge uh, Megan and, and her boats, the Relentless and, and Persistence, for the monitors to be on there. But the agency didn't have enough money to do it unless they charged the boats. And so they decided to read the regulation in a way favorable to the government so that they could go ahead and put more monitors on the boats than Congress approved. Megan, what's an analogy for people who are not in your industry to understand what this would be like for them in their daily life or in their business? How, how do you break it down for people? Well, it would really be like if your local town police force wanted to hire more policemen but didn't have enough tax revenue to do that. So they said, OK, well, we're going to make you pay directly for the salaries of these policemen um, and it's going to cost you 20 percent of your annual income. It's, you know, it's so interesting. And, you know, businesses across the country, uh, if someone gets, you know, injured, there's like 75 layers you have to go through. You have to bring people in to inspect your equipment and you have to pay them. So it really goes across the board for so many businesses. Mark, what's your take on this particular court, what you think they are likely to do? And what did you think of, of, uh, of Justice Kavanaugh's take on the fact that this becomes these regulatory agencies sort of come at the whim of incoming and outgoing administrations. And would this take that away, the ability to 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 dial them up or dial them down away from the government? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Justice Kavanaugh is exactly right that this this uh, these wild swings of how agencies interpret the law from one administration to the next it's not really consistent with the rule of law. I mean, Congress didn't pass a law whose meaning changes 180 degrees every time a new president mm -hmm. comes in. But if the courts have to defer to the administrative agency's interpretation of the rule, you get these dramatic switches back and forth in the meaning of the law. That's very difficult for a, for a fisheries company or any other company to, to deal with if the meaning of the law is changing 180 degrees every four years. Yeah. And so that's why we think judges need to be the ones 
who are deciding the meaning of the law, not federal agencies. Well, these are private industries, and we hear this president say that he embraces capitalism and the freedoms of capitalism. Uh, this is a major decision that will come down in June, likely from this court. Megan Lapp, thank you very much. Mark Chenoweth, great, great to have both of you with us today. We hope you'll keep us posted uh, as this okay. moves along. Thank you both. Thank you. Very Thanks, good Martha. to have you both here.